Welcome back to the lab. Welcome back to EE for Everyone. Now, I don't want you to take this the wrong way, but I can't wait for this video to be over. And why is that? Well, that's because at the end of this video, we are going to have the electrical design that we'll intend to implement in our schematic and ultimately pull forward into our Class AB Amplifier Dev Kit. And I am so excited to get some hardware in the lab again. It may not be an electronic load. By the way, check out that series if you haven't seen it, but it is still going to be a lot of fun. So let's dive in. I've picked a couple of transistors, a NPN and a PMP pair that are actually made for this sort of thing. They're actually made for this type of um, power amplifier, transistor amplifier type of application. They're made to operate in the linear. They're made to dissipate a ton of power. And I'm super excited to push these to their limit and see what we can do. I've done a couple things here that I don't think will break anything, might make things worse. I'm sure there's a reason why you don't do it. And it's pretty easy to bypass, so <laughs> let's see. Basically, we ran into an issue where there wasn't enough gain. There wasn't enough gain. And so I would need to pump so much power into the input of the amplifier that there came a point where it just got a little silly. And so there's two things that I did. One, you can see that I added a, basically made it like a Darlington pair, adding more current gain to Q1 with another 35, sorry, 3904 and 3906. And then we've got a class A amplifier on the input. We'll talk more about that in a second. And then you'll notice we have three diodes and one resistor. And why in the world have I done that? Well, what we're trying to do, remember, is this network is trying to match the base emitter voltage. And we want to use diodes because they'll have good temperature performance. So they kind of keep up with the system. But what I noticed is that the forward voltage for the diodes in our transistors didn't perfectly match the forward voltage for the diodes over here. And so I made one of these a resistor so I can kind of fine tune that voltage. So we can tweak that, we can put a different resistor in, and we can make this network more perfectly match the forward voltage. So we'll be trading off some of that temperature effect for a more, for a tighter, finer control of the bias point. We've got a couple added resistors here, and those are there just to make the system a little bit more stable. I don't see anything wrong with that. That's pretty common for this type of amplifier. And then we have our biasing network, which brings us kind of back to this class A amp. So this is limiting the amount of input current required to a very small amount, actually. And you'll notice that the upper side of this resistor is actually tied to V out. So what that means is that the higher V out gets, the more this transistor will turn on, and that's where you end up with this bias point. So basically, this ends up balancing out the current from that 2K resistor up there. If the V out drifts a little bit too high, this will turn down, it makes some negative feedback and makes the amplifier stable. It's pretty sweet. Um, so I suppose without further ado, let's run this and just look at the DC characteristics of this system. I've configured this to make three steps, one at 12 volts, one at 36, and one at 24. And if we don't just check V out, but rather we check the ratio of V out to V in, this isn't perfect, but it's pretty close to 50%, ranges between 54 and right around 67% of the input voltage. And of course, tweaking this resistor will tweak that bias point. All right, let's fix this back at, I think it was at 24 volts. We'll call that nominal. So how does this perform when there's a signal applied? Let's explore that. When we tie the input voltage, you can see right now, this is modeling a potentiometer swung all the way so that the maximum input voltage is applied. What you can see is that we're clipping with a two volt input. And I think that's great because a two volt input, I think was pretty easy to expect from a system like this. And the input current never exceeds four milliamps, which I think is very achievable for a system like this. If we tweak this resistor network so we're not clipping, you can see we have a nice clean sine wave. 
and it's almost using the full dynamic range available to us. We've got a 12 volt bias point, approximately, and that sine wave looks great. While we're here, if I take a look at the power dissipation, see the average power dissipation is seven and a half watts in the transistor, and the output power is six, seven, right around seven watts. So we're burning about 14 watts in the amplifier, one on the high side, one on the low side, half of that on the high and low. So it's about seven watts for each element, seven watts for the upper, lower transistor, and seven watts out. So that means we're at right around 33% efficiency. So that's right in the ballpark of what we might expect from a class AB amplifier. And that tells me that the biasing network is reasonable. We can actually push this to a lower impedance without damaging anything. So if I go ahead and do that, feed it a higher input voltage, let's say 36 volts. Let's give that a try, change this. So we have one ohm down here, 9.99K, still have our 10K resistor. Maximum input voltage, boom, 60 four watts out into a one ohm load. It's not bad. It's not bad at all. Definitely clipping. That's not ideal. <laughs> Need to think about that a little bit, but you can see this is capable of outputting some significant power. So it seems like we're dissipating reasonable amounts of power in our transistors. The class A is going to be the most sensitive to that. See, so we're dissipating about half a watt in our small transistors. That is kind of pushing the limit for 3904, 3906. Like to keep that under like a quarter watt, but it's not totally unreasonable. The class A is similarly in reasonable territory. This one's only dissipating 55 milliwatts. That's not going to be a problem. And the diodes, I, there's really nothing about this circuit that tells me that it shouldn't work. So I'm super excited to build this thing, try to push it to the limits and see how it works. Now, I think that was a great session in LT Spice, and I hope that you agree. I think we're in great shape to move forward and capture the schematic. If you like this video and can't wait for more, let me know by getting subscribed, hitting that like button and leaving a comment down below. A special thanks to our channel members. I really appreciate the extra step of supporting us directly. Coming up soon, we'll be capturing the schematic and laying out the PCB for this project. I can't wait. Most of all, I hope that you learned something great today and I hope to see you again soon. So thanks for watching me for everyone and thank you for staying till the end. Bye.